This summer, I had a couple of companies reach out to me about testing out some hiking gear, namely clothing, so I decided it was time to go shopping. One was a new merino wool-based technical shirt, typically used for biking, but also that could be used for hiking. And another was a rugged pair of tactical shorts that were claimed to be good to use in the heat. I decided to take this opportunity to also shop for some new boots. I have pretty much worn out my trusty old Keens, and I was also looking for something for an upcoming project that I am very excited about, because even though I typically hike and backpack in trail runners, I like to have a pair of sturdy waterproof boots for hiking in the Sierra here in the winters, and which are especially good for snowshoeing. I am wearing numerous new pieces of clothing this trip, so I will be doing several reviews. Uh, one of them is this shirt from Kitsbo. This is an American-made special blend. I'll put the details up here. Uh, it comes in around $70, $80. So we're gonna see how well that performs. I am also wearing my first tactical V2 shorts. And finally, I am wearing some brand new Keen hiking boots. I needed new hiking boots and I've just been on kind of this vintage backpacking gear kick lately. However, although they look pretty old school, they actually have some pretty modern features. So I'm going to be seeing if I like those as well. Well, so far the shirt feels really nice. It's very comfortable, very soft. Um, it's just clingy enough to serve as a base layer, but not so much that I feel like I'm trapped in the shirt. I can move around freely. I don't have a lot of motion. Um, I'm not getting any rub under the arms. So, so far this is feeling very comfy. It's going to be a hot hike today. I'm probably going to be looking at the high 80s, if not into the 90s. Um, I'm going to be in exposed sunlight quite a bit. So I'm going to find out if this shirt is going to work for me as a base layer or even an only layer. All right, so these are the first tactical V2 shorts. Uh, first thing to note is that they are actually quite rugged, and yet the material is stretchy in all the right places, if you know what I mean. These shorts are very easy to get around in. Um, they're just big enough and roomy enough to move, but at the same time, although they have a lot of storage, the pockets just ride right along your body. The pockets are very deep. I've got a whole phone in this pocket. I can get my arm all the way up to here into this front pocket. And then each leg has a Velcro enclosed smaller pocket, about wrist deep on me. And on the inside, it's got two smaller organizational pockets. And these are on both sides. There's a small strap loop here for attaching keys or something. And then next to both of these pockets is a smaller one that is great for you know keys, little pocket knife, that sort of thing. No enclosure on here. You're not gonna get more than about three fingers in those pockets. On the back, you've got two non-secured pockets. They do feel a bit warm. This is gonna be a pretty hot hike today. It should be in the high 80s, if not 90s. So I'm gonna find out how these do in the harder weather. Well, I've really only just got started, but so far the boots feel pretty darn good. I was a little concerned when I first put them on because they felt a little too roomy. And with boots that haven't been broken in yet, that's pretty much a recipe for blisters. However, they are actually conforming pretty well to me with my double sock system. I've got Injinji and Darn Tufts on. That's kind of my standard full protection sock system. So hopefully they will do well on this hike. One thing I am noticing is that at the uh, outside of each foot toward the top near the uh, pinky toe, um, I'm feeling a little bit of a ramp on the insole. So it feels like it's kind of lifting that part of my foot up a little bit. I'm not sure if I'm going to like that after a while. It's not uncomfortable, it's just different. I'm not really used to feeling the edges of my shoes because I'm used to wearing ultras and topos and other kinds of shoes that 
remain flat all the way across the insole. So I'll find out if that's a uh, benefit or a problem pretty soon. These boots are not super grippy. I meant to do that. Part of the reason I got these boots is because they are waterproof, which I know a lot of people are not into, but for the kinds of things that I do when I'm wearing boots, having them be waterproof is good and important. Again, not grippy. Not very grippy at all. I saw what looked like a good spot over here for a water test. Excuse me, little guys. I'm gonna come stand in the water because I'm a weird YouTube hiker gear tester guy. All right, so I'll just stand here for a little while. It's interesting the way the leather is colored. They seem to be oiled at the toes and on the back and a little bit of the sides. It's been about half a minute. I don't feel a thing on my feet. All right, well, if they've made it that long, looks like they're gonna make it. Well, that seemed to work. The water is all beaded up on the outside. The feet do not feel it at all. So I'm going to say, as far as the waterproofing goes, test complete. The things we YouTube hikers do for you guys, hmm? Huh? So at this point, the uh, shirt is definitely getting pretty wet from sweat droplets. It's only about 80 degrees, but it is very humid out here on the coast. The shirt is clinging to me pretty nicely. It's very, still very comfortable. The shorts are doing pretty well. I do feel a little bit of binding on the uh, inner thighs, just that kind of stuck to you feeling that you sometimes get with shorts. Uh, nothing terrible, it still moves around with me and I have full range of motion, but uh, these shorts are definitely a lot uh, warmer than what I usually hike in. However, what I usually hike in is usually about half this size and just made of very, very light nylon or something like that that breathes and just lets the air blow through. These shorts are not designed for that. Um, however, they are extremely tough feeling. I just, I feel like I could just slide down some of these rocks and these shorts wouldn't mind a bit. So at this point, what I'm thinking is long range hot hike, mm, maybe not. But for a nice day hike, especially if you want a lot of storage, easy access to things, uh, these are gonna be really good. I mean, these shorts would hold about as much as a fanny pack would, only they're gonna hold it securely and not bouncing around when you're moving. However, for a hot, sweaty hike, uh, I'm not sure these would be my go-to. All right, so let's keep going, see what else happens. So these shoes do not seem to require much of a break-in period. I have worn them around the office a little bit just to make sure they fit, but really this is my first hike. They definitely do not have the hard leather feel of your old school boots, so I don't really feel the need to break them in seriously. Okay, so it's only been about 10 minutes since the water test, and these things are bone dry. There's really no part of the shoe that retains moisture. Pretty cool. Another thing I like about these shorts is these pockets are just everywhere. Right now I've got a phone pocket, I've got a buff pocket, I've got a pocket knife pocket, pocket for the powder mix that I use in my drink, and I've got a trash pocket. And I've still got like twice as many pockets left over. So, so far these boots are actually doing quite well, considering how warm it is and the fact that I'm wearing two layers of socks, something I would normally not do on a hot day like this. My feet feel fine. I mean, they're kind of warm and cozy, but they don't feel hot. Again, full leather hiking boots are not the sort of thing I would normally choose to wear on a hot hike like this, nor would I wear additional layers of socks, but this is what I want to test them for. Probably these boots would just stay in storage until winter. They would be good for snow, snowshoeing, that kind of thing. The fact that they are performing well out here in the heat says a lot of good things about them.
So I just did a uh, quick inspection of the uh, downstairs area. I'll spare you the footage. It is definitely very warm <laughs> and damp. Not a lot of airflow downstairs right now. Luckily my ex officio boxer briefs are doing their job. Several people actually mentioned how well they do in warm weather, but I think what they are looking at there is how the shorts continue to look good, form well. But if you're looking for something that is more air conditioned, something that is going to keep you dry and breathable, uh, these are really not it. Okay, well, as you can see, the back of this shirt is uh, pretty much completely soaked, especially in the shape of the backpack, which does not have any ventilation on the back. I can feel all of the moisture rising to the surface. So this is not just a soaking wet shirt, it's actually wicking the sweat off of me, as a first layer should. And although I'm still sweating, which of course I would be in this kind of a setup, it is not just soaking the shirt and sticking the sweat to me. All right, well, I'm about three miles in to this fairly warm, sunny, humid hike. Um, the Kitzbo shirt is very wet. Um, I am just sweating all over the place right now. However, I still feel comfortable. There's a little bit of a breeze blowing through right now, and I can feel it just coming right through this layer. I can tell from the surface of the material that it is wicking the sweat off of my skin. So it is doing what a good base layer should do. I have a feeling it's probably gonna dry pretty quickly. I will find that out later. I have only been back in the car for about 10 minutes and this shirt is already basically dry. Um, but so far I am impressed with the shirt. Whatever this material is, it's very good for hiking feels great. Um, this is probably going to become my go-to hiking shirt. When I compare it to something like my Nike Dry Fit or my Columbia Sun shirt or some of the others that I've put on, the Kitzbo uh, definitely is more comfortable. It fits me better and it does a really great job wicking the sweat off of me. Now here's the thing about spending money on gear though, and I learned this lesson the hard way a number of times, but Although you don't necessarily want to go right to the very top of the spectrum for everything you get, you do, in general, get what you pay for. Now, right now, I'm sitting here in a $70 hiking shirt. That's a lot of money to spend. However, this is a shirt that is made in America. It's an American company. This is a company that is dedicated to producing extremely good clothing, and you can tell. It's the little thing. It's like not having a tag irritating me. You can just tell this is a well-made shirt. And, you know, at the end of the day, if I can buy five cheap shirts that are gonna wear out in a year, or one really good shirt that is not only not gonna wear out right away, but is also gonna perform better on its way to wearing out, sometimes the price tag balances out with the quality. Until I get a better read on the longevity, I'm not gonna know if I can recommend it as a $70 hiking shirt, but as far as the advertised features, I have to say it checks all the boxes for me that it said it would. I was a bit disappointed to discover that the shorts were not as rugged as I had initially thought. A couple slides down a couple of fairly smooth rocks and they had holes in them. So I gotta say the boots are pretty impressive. I mean, to rival trail runners for how warm they are, especially when they're waterproof, full leather boots, my feet really didn't get any hotter in them than they are right now in these trail runners. That's pretty impressive. I'm gonna have to look at my feet when I'm done here and see if blisters were getting started on my big toes and heels because I was aware of pressure from the boot in those areas. I'm not sure if that's something that's going to stretch out or work in. Again, these boots are not really the kind that should need a lot of uh, breaking in. So I'm not sure that any problems I have right now are gonna go away. I don't know what I'm talking about.